What's up, you just want to ask some badass, you beautiful Southern Hills badass country guys. How are you doing tonight? I'm your host, Raven Mr. J. How are you doing? And I'm Mulder. Alright, so, before I show us the product, I um, want to get into some uh, knowledge and battery safety. So, it is imperative. Yes, I'm using Jay Hayes' word, imperative, because it is the most important thing, and this is something we need to talk about. Something that's not really talked about enough amongst reviewers and people who are showing unregulated devices. So, it is imperative that you use high drain batteries. Um, currently, there are no true 30 amp 18650s on the market. If a battery says it's 30 amps, it's most likely to pre wrap. Because the only true 186 or true 30 amp 18650s are really hard to find or no longer exist. I know the VTC 4s are hard to find. Uh, VTC 3s, oh my god, those, those don't even exist anymore. They're out of production. The VTC 4s are. Um, there's the LG HB 2s, HB 6, and no, HB 4s and HB 6, which are 30 amp batteries, but those are hard to find. Um, the rest of them, uh, the Samsung 25Rs, the uh, LG HG2s, um, are 20 amp batteries. So, yeah. But, um, when you get into 30 amp batteries, or, well, I don't know if EFS uses the same battery. See, so this is the EFS right here. I just rewrapped it. Um, but this is a true 30 amp battery, 2700, tested by Mooch. He actually, they were actually rated, and he liked that fact. Um, I also have a uh, Lithi Core uh, 2700 that's also rated 30 amps. Don't know how true that is, but I'm uh, risking it anyways. So here's the mech mod. We'll go ahead and take a hit off because I, we're going to see what juice I'm using. Alright, so this. Is a vindicator. V I was about to say vindicator. <laughs> like a stutter and speech impediment like Joe Biden. All right, so this is a vindicator from uh, Kennedy. It is the older vindicator, 2700, not 21700, with a Kennedy uh, Trickster RDA, rocking a dual coil 26 gauge Cantal um, parallel build coming in at 0.13. Now the thing with that is. Uh, with Mac mods, um, there's a thing called voltage drop. Now, where voltage drop actually occurs is in the switch, the threads, and the contact of the atomizer itself. So, the more moving parts you have, the more uh, contacts you have, the higher the voltage drop. Um, this tube, from here to here, is all one piece. The only thing that is not one piece is the uh, bottom cap here, where the switch hides. So yeah, and um, obviously material plays a factor as well. Um, obviously stainless steel is going to have a lot higher voltage drop than say copper or brass. Um, aluminum is debatable. I haven't really used aluminum that much. I prefer copper, like my copper tugboat. Uh, I prefer this mod more. Um, as you guys know, I... Um, I have the uh, Avid Lifetime Keeper, the Tsunami Mech, which is pretty much all brass, brass body with a black Cerakoted sleeve, um, and then I have the Copper Tugboat, and um, out of all three mods, I like the Vindicator more, it hits harder, it takes a bigger battery, and that's that. <coughs> right, going back to voltage drop. So, the lower the voltage drop that you have, the harder the mod will hit. The higher the voltage drop... Uh, well, the weaker it hit. We can talk about the pulse, which is technically a uh, mechanical mod of sorts. Unregulated, but it is mechanical and it has extreme voltage drop, which is why a lot of people hated it. Mm -hmm. But, um, so, in a perfect world with a perfect mechanical mod, no voltage drop at 4.2 volts, this build is drawing 32.3 amps. But because it does have some sort of voltage drop, I'll give it about 3.7, 3.8 when it's firing. About 28, 29 amps. Okay. With that being said, 
If I was to use a single 18 650 at 20 amps with this build, even at 20, or not 28 amps, a single 18 650 that's 20 amps at 28 amps, that uh, that would be bad. That would be really bad. Even though I went lower on a single 18 650 with 20 amps, but I was on a Samsung 25R. But uh, I won't attempt that shit again because that was, uh, well, that was scary. Uh, my butthole was puckering when I was vaping on it. So, no. But, um, well, with these bigger batteries uh, that are getting, uh, like, 30 amp, getting up to 30 amps, eh, I feel more comfortable doing that. <clears throat> and they, this build is not for beginners. This is a freshly charged 18650. <coughs> it's how hard it is. So yeah. I would not recommend a, well I wouldn't even recommend the beginner to get into mech mods straight off the jump. Um, there's a lot of knowledge that's involved with them. Ohm's Law, battery safety, um, no one's your batteries can handle. Also know what your mods can handle because some mech mods can't, you can't build that low on them. I've learned that as well. You'll typically get a hot button, which we'll talk about here in a little bit because it involves clones and, uh, cheaper mods and shit. But, um, yeah, you definitely have to know what you're doing. So, hot button. What causes a hot button? Well, there's several things that causes a hot button. Um, dirty contacts, like your threads, uh, your button, your button housing itself, the, uh, contact that screws into the button. Uh, what type of spring are you using? Maintenance is key. Are you using, well, also are you using springs or magnets? I've had more issues with magnets getting hot buttons than springs. Unless we're talking about the Air Mods version 1.5 clone, but that's, that's just a shitty mod all in itself. But, um, also the, the price of the mod plays a factor. Cheaper the mod, cheaper the materials. More expensive, higher grade materials. Also, what is the uh, mod made out of? Is it brass, aluminum, aluminum, stainless steel, or copper? I've had better luck with uh, copper and brass than what I had uh, with, say, stainless steel or aluminum. So, also, is your mod a clone or an authentic? So I see a lot of people say, "Oh, well, the authentic or the clones are just as good as authentics." Why would somebody spend over two hundred dollars? Or over a hundred fifty dollars on a mechanical mod is because when you pay that price, you're not paying for the name; you're paying for the quality, and you're paying for where it's made. Uh, Kennedy uh, USA, their mods and their RDAs and everything are made here in America, proven by their Facebook, proven by a lot of vape reviewers. Kennedy is old school; they've been around for years. They actually started out as a CNC milling company in the 1990s. And then when vaping came around, they started making uh, mechanical mods and vaping gear. So, pretty cool, huh? Uh, Avid Life, they make high quality products as well. Their mods range anywhere from $150 to $300, if not more. Avid Life's more of competition <coughs> side of things. I don't know what, they, what the hell Kennedy's at. But, um, but yeah, that, all that plays a factor in mod heating up. Also, low builds. The lower you go with your build, the harder the mod, especially if the contact points aren't clean or if they're dirty, uh, lower the build, the harder it is for the, uh, the battery to generate the, or transfer the electricity to the atomizer to get to the coils. That's another thing you have to look at. So, like I said, there's a lot of variables that play into a uh, hot button issue. And uh, your mod getting hot. So. Now, I want to address the people that say, oh, mechanical mods are dangerous, this and the other. They're only dangerous if the person that's using it doesn't know how to use it. If you put a .1... On a 5 amp battery, well, of course the motherfucker's gonna explode. 
Wait. Jesus Christ. And then you have the people who say, oh, these AT650s are dangerous. Why can't manufacturers use cell phone batteries? Um, Y'all do realize that the batteries that are in our cell phones are lithium ion. They're lithium based. Like. Also, um, internal battery mods use lithium based batteries. Jesus Christ. All in all, it, and it also really depends on what type of uh, 18650 you're using. Are you using INR, ICR, um, magnesium, something or another? You'd have to watch battery moods. I'm not a battery expert. But it all depends on the chemistry. IMR and INR are the safest chemistries you're going to get. ICR is more volatile. It is more violent when it goes in the thermal runaway. So yeah. This misinformation about mech mods and batteries being dangerous, vaping being dangerous. I know this shit happened four years ago. <coughs> but um but like that all that propaganda needs to be taken off of YouTube. Because every single instance of those cases where people had vape pens. Also, I don't know why they call them vape pens. Those aren't vape pens. But in the cases of those vape pens exploding in people's mouths, pockets, and all that. Well, first off, why the fuck are you putting a damn mechanical mod in your pocket? Secondly, why is the vape shop selling uh, mechanical mods to people who don't know what the hell they're doing? I know when I first got, it, when I wanted to get a mechanical mod, my vape shop, the very first vape shop I ever went to, had a Praxis version 2. And they refused to sell it to me until I knew what the hell I was doing. Okay? That's a responsible vape shop. <sighs> also, what are these vape shops doing? Because in some instances I see where... Uh, mech mods have exploded, and the atomizer they used on their mech mod was a sub-ohm tank. And these are hybrid mech mods. What fucking dumbass set them up with that setup? Whoever did that should be castrated and fired. And then you have these people saying, oh, why don't they sue the companies? Well, if it's a mechanical mod... That's all based on user error. It's up to you to know what you're doing. <clears throat> People like Jay Hayes and a lot of others who were old school, who started out old school with the little egos and shit, and they got into mechanical mods. Back then, that's how they learned how to build, was on mechanical mods. And a lot of them had errors. A lot of them fucked up. A lot of them invented batteries. There was no ohm meters. There was no regulated mods when mechanical mods first started coming out. So, yeah. But you guys, seriously, like, y'all need to knock that shit off saying that uh, mechanical mods are dangerous. They're not dangerous. They can be if uh, they're used wrong. But that's with anything. Take a look at a motorized vehicle. Drive 150 miles an hour, you crash into somebody, you're using that vehicle for what it wasn't intended for, for one, and you were misusing it. <coughs> Actually, here's a better example. And Mooch made a perfect example when he did that live stream with Jay Hayes, uh, I think it was a week ago or something like that. He said that's like, uh, say, say you want to drive and first year to work every day, fucking uh, redlining the shit out of it. Yeah, you can do it. But you end up going to fuck something up. Who are you going to sue? Manufacturer? No, that's your fault. It's the same thing with me using mechanical mods and batteries. If you don't know what you're doing, or you do know what you're doing, and you do stupid shit, like I am, which I wouldn't really call this stupid, because I'm doing like... One to three second pulses. 
But, if you don't know what you're doing, or you don't do proper research, that is on you, not the company, not the manufacturer of the battery. These batteries are inherently safe. Hell, well, maybe not these batteries, but I do use similar batteries in my flashlights. 2700, 18650s, 18350s, 16340s. The list goes on. I have two, uh, shit. Two Streamlight 18650s in my Protac uh, HL5 X stacked in series on the 3500 lumen flashlight. Okay? Or is it 3000? I can't remember, but it was, no. It's over 2000. Yeah, fucking. It. Lumens don't matter. But the batteries are safe. Okay? No, it is, it is 3500, that's right. But yeah, it's flashlight. But you gotta know what you're doing. Also, builds. I'm down to builds. Um, if you're gonna get into Mac Mod, I would start off with a higher cage wire. Um, the first build I put on this uh, setup right here was a 2060H dual coil. I think there was seven wraps in it. Ohmed out to about 0.4. It vaped good. Or if you uh, if you really want to and you want to go 0.15, 22 gauge cancel, five wrap, four five wrap, three millimeter inner diameter will shoot you around there. Perfect vape. But make sure, and I can't stress this enough. Also, make sure you use reputable batteries. I'm only available to what I can get, which is either Lithy cores. Home tax or LGs. That's about all I can get now for well, Lithium Horse for twenty seven hundred. I fucking uh, vape shop stopped selling the purple E Fest uh, twenty seven hundred, so that sucks. But um But I would say go with reputable manufacturers like Samsung, Sony, LG, uh Sanyo if you can find them. But um yeah. Also, if somebody tells you, um, oh, here, check out this 35 amp battery, turn away immediately. There's no batteries, even 18 or even 2700s that go over 30 amps. There's no 18650s that go over 25 amps. When you see 30 or 35, 40 amps on a battery, that's a bullshit claim. Okay. But uh with safety aside, um like I said, just do your research, learn Ohm's law. If you have to, use steam engine uh dot I think it's dot org. They have a nice little uh Ohm's law calculator and a coil wrapping calculator or a coil wrapping to help you uh figure out what coils you want, your target resistance and everything, what type of wire you're using. So, smack mod. What do I think of it? Well, I think it's really nice. It hits hard. Gorgeous. Um, love the copper. Uh, love the setup overall. Decent little cloud chaser. Clean, man. Clean. Um, although, I paid a lot for it. I paid $300 for the entire setup at uh, the local vape shop. <laughs> Now I want to show you something with the button, because I have never seen this done before. I've I've seen uh, mods where you can adjust the screw and adjust the throw, but not something like this on the fly. So watch this. We'll push up, rotate, put it back in. Now you seen how far I had to press that that button to uh, get it to fire. Now look at this. That is literally a feature on this button where you can rotate it. So that was pretty cool. Pretty neat little feature. Push back up. And uh, we're back into the uh, longer throw. Which I like in a longer throw because, uh, yeah. Hmm. But, uh, hits hard, looks great, 
looks really good with this uh this Kennedy uh tracer, which by the way is a great RDA. Two post design. Um really easy to build on. I was really shocked on how easy it was. I looked at the deck and I'm like, well oh, fuck. This is gonna be fun. But uh with twenty six gauge chantal it wasn't that hard to uh maneuver around the wires so you get them clipped. So and uh, bottom airflow. We I love bottom airflow for cloud chasing. I don't know what it is, man. Cloud chasing flavor, bottom airflow all the way. So, back my I'm going to rate it an 8.5. Now, actually, I'm going to go 9. Now, RDA. Now, you guys know I have the Tsunami, uh, the Tsunami 24. I have the Tsunami Pro, which both utilize the same airflow design as the Kennedy. Kennedy is pretty much what started the whole bottom airflow situation. And a lot of people loved it. The original Kennedy actually did underneath the deck airflow. But the problem with that is when you would drip, it would get all over your fucking mods, your hands, it get everywhere. I personally didn't have that. But there were a lot of people who did. And then they redesigned the airflow to uh, come out on the side, which helped alleviate the problem. You'd still get a little juice here and there. And then they, uh, they did, a, I think, another one. And then they did this one. A lot of people didn't like this one. Um, Jay Hayes didn't like it because he just liked, liked the way he could just be able to put the cap on and not have to adjust anything. But some people wanted adjustable airflow, so uh, Kennedy did that. And, uh, yeah. But I personally like adjustable airflow. So. But... The flavor, um, easy build. I'm gonna use the RDA 9.5. Also, the best part about it is Kennedy was the original per or the original company to create the 810 drip tip. Found that out. It was not Goon. It was Kennedy. Kennedy created the 810 drip tip. And they did a damn good job when they created theirs because look how wide boy that little motherfucker is. That's a straight shot, man. I fit my I fit my little pinky in here. Look at that. Pinky goes in. But um Yeah man. Already is you know nine point five. Alright, let's get on to the juice so we can wrap this some bitch up. Vape Tasia. This is a uh, killer custard blueberry. And we all know how much I love blueberry. I had um, Juice Head, which was a blueberry lemonade. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and get in the flavor. Actually, let's get in the smell first. Shall we? Let's go ahead and get in the smell. Mmm. Smell like blueberry. I drink this juice, man. Go ahead and get some of my water. Flavor coming out of the uh, Kennedy Trickster RDA with a 0.11 or 0.13 ohm build, hotter than a motherfucker. Flavorful as shit. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. <sighs> Definitely getting that blueberry and a little custard. Mm. That's some good shit right there, man. So I'm going to give a flavor an 8.5. Uh, I will show you the packaging of the box, but I threw the box away. I threw the little pamphlet that comes in the box away. So, yeah, you're going to be able to see that. But uh, flavor, 8.5. Because this is a hot build, um, it goes through juice pretty fucking quick. I get about two long, hit, or two long pulls off of it. And it's dry. <laughs> Drier than shit. Alright, three, two, one. Alright, clouds. So, if I get in the rating of the clouds, this is a 70 30. Pretty much what all uh, killer or uh, vape taser juices come in. 70 30. Um, 
Obviously, no 70-30, 70 VG, 30 PG. So, 70-30 is on the uh, higher end of the PG or VG spectrum. So, clouds, as you've seen, coming out of, I would call it a competition RDA with a fucking cloud chase, like a mega cloud chasing build. But, um, so, out of a competition RDA with the build I have in here, at the power I'm running, um, we give the clouds a nine, an easy nine, <coughs> straight up fucking nine. All right, so overall rating of the setup. If I had to rate it as a package or paired together, solid ten, solid fucking ten. Hard hitting, it's got good flavor. The mod can take the fucking uh the resistance I'm running it at. Um, yeah, man. It's awesome. But I did spend $300, and not a lot of people can afford something like that. Unless you're Jay Hayes. <laughs> or some uh, other uh, guys who like high end, like Fogging Out with the Batman. He uh, he buys some pretty uh, high end mech mods. But, um. Yeah. But all in all, Kennedy. I'm liking the, the company Kennedy now even more. Just from what I heard about them in the past with the bottom airflow, like on the uh, tsunami and all that, and a lot of other RDAs. Yeah, Kennedy's high up on the list. <laughs> Man. But, um, leave it on one last note, and this actually goes into juice. If you are playing on Rome, I am buzzed. That's only three. If you are running a lower build, you really don't want to go with any nicotine in the juice, especially if doing cloud chasing. That is one thing I cannot stress enough. If you're doing a lower build, you want to cut your nicotine in half. If you're running a higher uh, higher on build with a lot of voltage, you want to cut your nicotine in half. So, if you're, uh, I would say if you're running point two, cut it into a three. If you go below point one four, cut that, uh, three down to a one or even a zero. Well, actually a 1.5 because, uh, 1.5, 1.5 is <coughs> milligrams. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. Anyways, um, not much else I can say. I think we covered the bases. Um... So, uh, stay safe, vape on, um, go ahead and quit smoking, don't go back to the stinkies, we don't need anybody on those anymore, and, um, you guys have a good one. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like down below, don't forget to comment, share, and subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification bell to be alerted when we upload new videos, and if you do hit the notification bell, go ahead and hit all notifications. So you'll have all notifications, not some notifications. Anyways, we'll see you when ass and badass is your beautiful Southern Bells, badass country guys later. I'm your host, maybe Mr. J. I'm Woda. And we are signing out.